Hey everyone, and welcome to the Sleepy <laughs> Fox Yarn Podcast. This is a fiber arts podcast about um, what I'm knitting and crocheting, uh, sewing, pretty much anything I am crafting at the moment, and occasionally some shop updates. Um, my name is Holly. I Yay. live in <laughs> I live in North Carolina with my family. I have a daughter, a son, yeah. a hubby. <laughs> And baby on the way with a cat and a dog. So we're having a girl. We are having a girl. I have a co-host today. My kids are home. Um, I am no longer in the craft room anymore. I am in the kitchen dining room area. So I gave up my craft room, and now it is Nick's drum room or the music room. So yes. Um, you can find me on Ravelry as Holly Nicole thirteen sixteen. I am also on Instagram as Sleepy Fox Yarn Co. Um, that's pretty much it. We do have a podcast group, albeit I don't use it very often, if at all, lately. Um, so yeah, is that it? I think that's it. I'm also the dyer and designer behind Sleepy Fox Yarn Company. Um, That's the yarn right there. Is this the yarn? No, these aren't mine. Mine are over there. Um, so, yeah. We have a lot to talk about today. Oh, we yes. are on episode 47. Are you going to come say hi, too? This is the fun part of being in the dining room. Everyone comes to say hi. What? What? Where is your yarn? Yeah. Don't worry about it right now, Emma. It's fine. Hi. Okay. So there will be lots of distractions for what nose got on my chin. There will be plenty of distractions from animals and kids alike, I'm sure. Okay, Shall go lay down. I have Come on. chocolate. Lily, go lay down. Come on. Lily. Okay. Okay, Lily. Come on. Hi. So there will be lots of. House family noises going on. No way. I see a book. Um, so we will hop into FOs. Nope, put it back. We're not looking at books right now. Put it back. Okay. FOs. So it has been a long three months. Four three and a half months. September was the last time I podcasted, and I'm a big fat liar and said that I would start podcasting more regularly. Give well, me a minute, Mama. I think this is in the backyard. It's not hard. You know, okay? Um, life has been crazy. So, that is why I have not jumped back on. Mainly, the big one is. I found out I was pregnant in August. I didn't say anything in the podcast because I was still pretty early on in my pregnancy. Um, I am now almost seven months pregnant. So I am definitely feeling it now. Um, okay. So the first thing up on the FOs is the Calazon or Calazon by the Barocco design team um this was the head wrap i was making emma yes that's my favorite wrap and it is the yarn is premier yarn serenity chunky in the colorway unicorn um it is a free pattern and what was i gonna say it was actually really easy once you got the hang of the cable and which way shh, which way things to put the needle. Um, but yeah, it was very easy. Oh, do me a favor. Hand me that one that's underneath that piece of paper. Okay. Um, so yeah, that was my first FO. My second one was Jeez. mittens. These are huge. I know. <laughs> Um, so my second FO was I made mittens for Colin. Um, 
Stop. Not yet, please. Can I want to use yogurt. No. Um, this is the Knits for Everybody Mittens by Jenny Williams. Um, and the story with these, I did start a different pair for him. But I used, if you watched the last podcast, I talked about using the, sorry, I feel like I have a hair stuck to my lip. Um, I was talking about using the Red Heart Super Saver Fair Isle, and it was also like, it's called Calm Fair Isle. So it was literally the same exact colors, but in a different pattern. <laughs> um... I did have these stickers, but I got rid of them. Okay. So, I was starting... I decided that's what I was going to do. I was going to do the Fair Isle, so they kind of match, but weren't matchy-matchy. And I hated the way it came out. The first one was, first off, I hated the way it looked. And two, it was huge. And I basically threw that one aside, threw it away, Put the yarn away. I was like, I'm not going to use that one. It doesn't look good. And I just used the same color that I used for his beanie, which is the Red Heart Super Saver Stripes in the Calm Stripes color way. Hey, Mom. Yes. Um, when, when, after when you're done dyeing your, uh, your, your, uh, Yarn, um, we're going to the store and then... Maybe. Can, and then can you do my purse? Do your purse? Yeah, well, I'll think, I'll look into it, okay? Um, so he, this, so I'm thinking I used a different needle for his, like a size needle. Because his hand still measured the same at 5.75 inches. Um, but this came out bigger than the one that he has before. He technically wore the same size. It just needed to be longer. But these are a little bigger. So I, I think I went up a needle size on these. Um, which would explain a lot with the first one why it went so bad. Um, but yeah, we have a pair of finished mittens. Um, let me see. What's next? Oh, okay. So, like I said, I am pregnant. So I wanted to, are you going to say hi too? Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? I'm doing a video. Say hi. Hi. Are you going to actually show your face? That's. You good? I was just like tapped. I just hi. I was holding him. This is my little brother. They know who he is. Okay, so you guys go play, please. Thank you. Without sounding like crazy animals, please. Hey. Normally it's quiet when I podcast. Um, so, go play in the living room, please. Um, like I said, I'm pregnant, so I really wanted to make a baby blanket, and it's so funny because I always have all, I have so many afghans and blanket patterns that I have saved on Ravelry that I'm like, oh, I'd love to make these one day, and then of course when I get to actually picking, I get so picky and I'm just like, nope, not this one, not this one, not this one. It took me forever to find a blanket pattern that I actually wanted to do that was also not fingering weight because there's no way on this green earth I would do a fingering weight blanket right now. Like, no, no, no. Maybe one day, but today is not that day. So, I still have not woven in the ends because I've been really lazy and I've moved on to other projects, but I will um, weave in the ends before she gets here. So this is the Better Together Afghan uh, by Jeannie Steinhuber and 
I want to say his name is Mikey. I don't know his last name from the crochet crowd on uh, YouTube. Um, so this is the blanket. Now this blanket is supposed to be way bigger than this, but it's a baby blanket. So I didn't want to make it huge. Um, so yeah, I used the Knit Picks Bravo Worsted. I ended up, that's part of my acquisitions. I don't have it here because it's still in a giant box. I bought a crap ton of Brava Worsted because I was like, this is the year I'm gonna make all the kids blankets, which I still want to do. And with seeing how fast this one went, albeit it is a baby blanket, um, it kind of got that crafty mojo like to crochet again, which surprisingly has not <laughs> been killing my wrist. And I think that is mainly in part to Nick and I took a um, food sensitivity test and found all the foods that have been triggering our immune system to negatively respond to such food. So we've made a lot of drastic food changes in our house in order to help not only me, but him with food issues because he is actually far more sensitive and intolerant to a lot of other foods that I am not. So like I have like 16 and his is like 28. It was crazy. Sorry, I'm drinking ice water. Oh, so good. Um, okay. So I'll go through the colors and I guess the easiest way to show you is on the Catherine wheel stitch, which by the way, I hate. It is really pretty. I hate doing it. <laughs> it's a pain in the ass. Um, so we have white, cream, um, seashell, coral, lady slipper, and then the dark purple down here is mulberry. Um, <laughs> I have to say, when I started this blanket, I was very iffy on this coral color. I was just like, everything else looks so beautiful together. Like, I love it. And then the coral was like, not the right tone. But I was like, you know what? I bought it. I started it. I'm just going to do it. And I pretty much decided I wasn't a fan of it until like here. I was like, mm. but I stuck with it and I actually like it. It still isn't, it's not perfect by any means. And it is not the ideal blanket I had in mind, which doesn't exist. Um, but I think it turned out really cute in the end. Um, I did not, like I said, I did not do the whole pattern because it is a huge blanket, huge, 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 huge blanket. Um, I stopped at row 39. I did row 39, stopped, did a um, half or yeah, Mom. a double crochet round. Yes. Um, Not right now. She's at school. It's Monday, which we have to do schoolwork later. Um, quit squeezing that before you bust it, please. Like that? Yeah. Don't like squeeze it to the point that it's like going to burst. Okay, so I stopped at row 39, did a round of double crochet, and then ended with a half double crochet round, and it was just like, that's good enough for me. Um, I was going to do a single crochet round in the white just to make it feel more finished, but Nick was like, if you do any more, you're going to end up doing way too much. <laughs> And then, you know, it's going to be huge. And he's like, that blanket's already big enough for a baby. So I just left it as it was. Um, but yes, I really, I really do like the way it came out. So that 
is it for our FOs. Like I said, I still have to weave in the ends, which luckily I really don't have a lot of ends to weave in. It's basically like the last two rounds that I did that I have to weave in ends, mainly the last, there's like one, two, three ends that I actually have to weave in because I weaved them in as I went. Um, that way I didn't have to do a whole bunch at the end. And this edge is driving me crazy. It's curling up. So I'm hoping when I wash it, I will lay it out flat and pin the edge down. So, and my feet are going numb. I'm so sorry. Hold on. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm sitting on the floor, which is not the most comfortable position for someone who is, you know, almost seven months pregnant. <laughs> okay. So I have a half object, which is going to be tossed because I'll just show you. Okay, so this was supposed to be a mitten for Emma. Okay, this is Red Heart Super Saver in the Candy Fair Isle. And, okay, her hand is a lot smaller than mine. But I can put her mitten on. And, I mean, and it's not tight by any means. And this part, like the thumb, there's like a huge gap in here. And I was just like, what happened? I used the, I made sure, I was like, Collins, I messed up on the first time. They ended up huge. I'm gonna double check, make sure that I'm using the correct size needles. I was, and it's still huge. And I'm just like, what the heck? So, um, I need to take this stitch marker out because I'm not using it. Okay, come on. So I'm thinking I'm going to toss this and start over. And unfortunately, I don't have enough of this colorway to do it. Um, and she's lost the beanie that I showed from the last podcast. She has no idea where it's at. So, yeah, that was the project that I started um, soon after Collins Mittens because it, we had a real cold snap and it got to the point where for like a week it was the highs were in the 30s and that was like it. But, you know, now not the case. <laughs> so they were going outside and playing, but it was really cold. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't have any mittens for her. Um, although I did buy her gloves, like the insulated double waterproof-ish kind that if you put your hands in snow, your fingers aren't gonna get wet. And those ended up being too a little too small for her. So one thing after another, I swear. <laughs> So I'm going to make her new pair mittens soon <laughs> because I was having so much trouble. And I think that's why I was struggling and not wanting to make them mittens because, and I'm like literally waited until the last minute. Um, and I think it has to do with that particular pattern is if I do it the way they say it ends up massive. And I'm thinking that's just because I'm a really loose knitter, I have come to realize. Can I help you, ma'am? What? Can I help you? You want to sit with me? What? Sit. There you go. Yeah, just lay down. Lay down. Oh, smelly dog. Okay. Um, so I think that is part of the issue is that when I did them last time, I had, I think I had to do both pairs twice. So I think that's why I was kind of, sorry, my hair is driving me nuts. Um, why I dreaded doing them this time, I'm just like, oh, I hate doing these mittens. As simple as they are, they are not difficult at all. I mean, 
you have the thumb gusset, but other than that, it's pretty much straight knitting. Because I don't do the palm increases, I just make them straight. Um, so, yeah, they're super easy, but I think that's why, is because I end up having to do um, each pair like twice to make sure my gauge is right. Even though I use the needle size that she says. So, hair, animals, or mine, or yarn fuzz, I don't know. Whips, okay. Um, I have three whips currently that I'm working on. Um, sorry. What you eating? Your leftover panda express. It's really not a lot, but it lasts a lot of noodles. Yeah. Um, so I started a pair of socks for Colin, and it is in my Lila Styles bag. Um, and I am doing it on 2.25 millimeter needles, and this is just a plain old vanilla sock, and I believe this is 56 stitches. Um, so this is where I'm at, and I won't lie, this project has been sitting <laughs> for, for a while now. Um, so yeah, I am using Knit Picks Felici in Firefighter. He picked this out of the yarn stash, and he said this is the one he wants his socks made out of. Um, so yeah, this has been sitting for a while because I started, I did the mittens for him, started Emma's mittens, but then he said he wanted socks. So I was like, okay, well I'll have mittens and socks. Like that's fine. Well, then I got disturbed with the mittens and then I got the itch to do a baby blanket and then the baby blanket came and went, socks still waiting. So... <laughs> Yeah, I need to get back on that. Um, yeah, I need to work on this and get these off the needle because I know he's been asking for socks. Um, yeah, so that's that one. Next is something that is going to be a whip for the entire year. Um, I did do a post about it on Instagram about doing a temperature blanket for 2021. So um, if you don't know what a temperature blanket is, it is every day, people do it differently. You either take the high of the day. Um, I haven't seen anyone take the low before, but they'll take the high of the day of what the highest temperature of the day was, or they'll pick a time and they'll pick that temperature for the day. I just did time because it just made more sense to me that at one o'clock I'll check to see what the temperature is and typically around one or two is the high anyways. Um, so I was like, all right, I'm just gonna do it at one o'clock. I'll pick whatever the temperature is. I'll write it down in my planner so I have it there as a note and then I'll crochet it. So I'm doing that so here is where i'm at i have done 10 days i haven't done today's because it is currently only 12 30 so it is really long and it is crocheted so and i'm kind of switching between two stitches so it is the grit stitch that i'm using but I kind of modified it so the first five rows were half double crochet grit stitch, which probably doesn't make any sense. I don't know what that would be called, what stitch that would be called, but that's what I did. Realized it was getting really thick for only five days. And I was like, ooh, this is going to be ginormous. So then I was like, well, then I'll just do five days of the half double crochet grit stitch and then the normal grit stitch was a single crochet and I'll do five days of that so that way it'll you know 
it won't get so long, you know, from 365 rows because there's 365 days. So, sorry, talking a lot, it makes my mouth really dry. So, yes, this, this is the bottom and this is basically as of yesterday. So, I am going to start doing it to where I do every two to three days up to five. Just because sitting down to do one row on a blanket every day, all it just it's too much for me it bothers me to be honest so especially when you know when I first started down here obviously there were several days that were in the same temperature range um and I would cut after every one and I'm like well this doesn't make sense because if I could just take it up so I'm gonna do every two to three days max five so that way it gives me something to sit down and do that isn't just like 10 15 minutes so I could like sit and watch a movie or a show or something that I'm not you know having to grab another project in 20 minutes basically so this is the start of that um I will show you my color palette um So this is actually what I showed on Instagram was a picture of the palette that I picked for my blanket, which is very rainbow. Most of them are. Um, this yarn is Loops and Threads Impeccable yarn and the colorways I have listed for each temperature. So zero to 10 is white. Um, 11 to 20 is amethyst, so the dark purple. Uh, 21 to 30 is lavender. 31 to 40 is sapphire. 41 to 50 is misty blue. 51 to 60 is deep forest. Uh, 61 to 70 is fern. 71 to 80 is sunny day. 81 to 90 is pumpkin. 100, or 91 to 100 is Chloray and or Chloret depends on how you say it and then a hundred plus is the burgundy so whether or not I'll get to actually use these three is very debatable because um we're already in you know 11 days into January which is typically the coldest month here and we've been <laughs> sitting in this in this color for several days now um like i said if i get to use some of those it would be amazing um the white i am almost positive i will never use but i wanted it just in case we get that one crazy day that's like oh guess what it's eight degrees outside you know that I, that hasn't happened here yes i forgot we had chocolate milk yeah we have chocolate milk um that happened like when we lived in Virginia that happened maybe one or two days out of the out of a week in the middle of January um, so that happening here in North Carolina I am very doubtful but who knows um, so my last and my most excited whip that I'm excited for is I am working on my Estrella sweater. Yee! Um, this is a pattern by Megan Reagan, and she is the create dyer and designer behind Bad Wolf Girl Studios, and she also has the Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits podcast. Um, so yes, I'm very, very excited about this. Um this is the picture of her wearing it i'm so excited oh my gosh so and i will tell you this i plan to make this in september okay i hadn't started it yet oh my i had not started it yet i had bought the yarn i was waiting to start it 
problem was I didn't have a 16 inch cable with needles on the needle size for the ribbing. So I waited and then, you know, the mittens and the baby blanket and the temperature blanket and socks, everything kind of pushed it out of the way. So when I got done with the baby blanket and was then having issues with her mittens, because that was the last project I worked on before the Estrella sweater, I was like, you know what? I'm not. I am going to make my dang sweater. I've been wanting to make it since September. I've had everything since September. I want to make my sweater. Um, so I was pretty much like, I said I was going to selfish knit. I was going to make something for myself. And I have it. <laughs> so I started it. I need to actually, um, sorry, put it on a bigger table because I've done, I've done so many, um, increases and there's still about one more round of increases before you get into the actual body of it. So here's what it looks here. Let me make sure I'm not doing. Okay. Let me get you a good spot. So here it is so far. Mind you, this is all scrunched up. It has not been blocked. Um, so I'm super excited. Ooh. Oh, I thought I dropped some stitches. <sighs> okay, so this is the start of the sweater. Oh my gosh, guys. I'm so excited. I did try it on over my head and it was a little snug to the neck and I had a feeling it would do that looking back at the, the pictures um I had a feeling and on this I hope I'm not giving too much away she has you do a what is it called it's a cast on that I've never done before alternating cable cast on oh my god that cast on took me at least a good hour and a half to two hours to do because I've never done it before. Um, and I screwed it up <laughs> and there are um, quite a few mistakes in here already. Um, I love the way it's coming out with the contrast of the black and the purple. It's like it's making me so excited. Oh my goodness. So I am right about here. So I'm on the little row right above the moons. So I should be getting to the moons. What are you doing? <laughs> She's literally blowing bubbles in her milk. Um, so yeah. Um, I have a bunch of stitch markers on here because I was marking every 50 stitches. So it was just easier to count. And then once I did the increases, you know, I could keep count easier. So I wasn't counting every single, um, oh my God, I got another hair. Ugh, it's driving me crazy. This is why I don't wear lipstick most days anymore. Um, why I don't wear makeup most days anymore. Okay. What was I saying? Crap, I forgot. Um, oh, so yeah, I have a bunch of stitch markers on here just to kind of help me keep count just because it is a lot of stitches because I am making, I believe, the 2X size and, um, I know from doing her other shirt that mine and her tension of knitting is pretty freaking close. Um, so 
I just have a tendency to go up too high on the size chart and then I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh my God, this is huge. Why is it so big? Because I have a tendency to think I'm bigger than I am. So I end up picking a size that is far too large. So this time I was like, I'm just going to do the 2X. I am almost positive it will fit. It will work. Everything will be fine. And judging by this so far and the when I slipped it over my neck just to see... Uh, my tension is on pro on point. Um, she does give you the option to do the short row shaping, which I did. I have never done short row shaping before. Um, and I noticed that I have these ginormous holes in the back. And I'm like, what? the hay <laughs> so now i have these huge let me see can you i'm trying to get it to where you can see it these huge holes from the actual like the short row increases and it's one of those things that it bothers me but it's also on the back of my sweater, and I'm not going to see it, so it's not going to bother me. And I've already messed up several times on the chart where I have miscounted um, with the actual, like, color work itself. Ugh, it's whatever. And it was luck luckily... It was just on the rows where it was just these little little guys wow. over here. Like, it didn't actually mess up the pattern itself. Yes, Emma? Um, I don't want this anymore. Can I give it to Lily? What is it? It's broccoli with the chicken. No, don't give her that. Well, okay, I'll eat it later. Okay. If you don't want it, I can eat it or you can put it away. Um. So, yeah. So my plan for this is not to make a full sweater. It is more so to make a cropped sweater. Um, that is the plan. I want a cropped sweater because I have a tendency to, I have a few dresses that I could see this going on top of that would be so cute. Um, but also, the thought of me doing a full sweater for myself and sitting and getting all the way through it, eh, I think I would, I think it would end up sitting and I wouldn't finish it. Kind of like when I did her racer back um, tank, which I can't remember the name of right now. It's still sitting in a project bag and I know I'm like halfway through the body and there is no sleeves guys there is no sleeves on it it is a tank but I still haven't finished it <laughs> so I'm thinking I'm going to do a crop sweater so that I can wear it over dresses that are typically you know my summer dresses that I can also wear in the winter because like I said pregnant <laughs> Pants are not a thing. It's either like pregnancy leggings or a dress. So I wanted to do something to where I would still be warm wearing it without wearing like a full size cardigan or, you know, a full sweater because sometimes I can get really, really hot as well. And I feel like doing a crop sweater, I wouldn't get so hot. Um... But we'll see. Um, the yarn I am using is uh, Valley Yarns Haydenville DK. So it is 60% super wash merino wool and 40% acrylic microfiber. And let me tell you, it is soft. Like, it is so soft, guys. Like, um, and that is the black colorway. So it's 05 black. And then the purple, which is my contrast, is the... 18 lavender 
I am loving this and it was funny because which I'm getting it now I had the last two pregnancies so Colin and this one my pelvic bone hurts <laughs> a lot and I've noticed that the longer I sit the more it hurts so I can't just like rest yes Emma uh, I can't hear a tablet like I turned it up, but I put it, turned it back down, but I was trying to figure it out. Um. Are you sure there's the music to it? Let me see. Because it's not off. There's no reason why it shouldn't be working. Like, even on the app itself. I don't know. It just, I guess you're going to have to play it while it's quiet. Hey. What are you doing? Um, so yeah. My pelvic bone hurts sitting so it has been really hard to also sit and work on these projects where I may sit for an hour maybe two and that's pretty much it like I have to get up I have to move I have to get around do something then you know maybe sit for another 30 45 minutes and then get up and move and do something like I can't sit all day and <laughs> When I started this one, this hair, guys, is driving me nuts. When I started this project, I literally sat on the couch. I want to say all day, but that's a lie. Because <coughs> I started on Saturday. And Saturday was like, Nick was watching all of the football games and was like, can you make us a fruit tray and some chicken wings and stuff like that? And I'm like, yeah, sure, no problem. So, you know, breakfast, up, uh, making breakfast. And then while breakfast was going, I chopped up a whole bunch of fruit and made like a fruit tray. Um, had that done. Then I sat down, ate breakfast. We did that sat on the couch after and I was just like I'm gonna take a break been on my feet all morning for like the last two hours except to like eat so I sat down and I started I started the cast on the night before so that and I was just like okay well I'll work a little bit on the ribbing so I did some of the ribbing Van got up and he was like um I can't remember what else I did. I got up to do something. Got up and did something else. I can't remember. It's hard to remember sometimes nowadays. <laughs> Pregnancy brain is a real issue. <laughs> so got up, did that. Then I came back, worked on it some more. Then it was getting close to like dinner time because they had a ginormous fruit tray, guys. Like I was not making lunch. They had pineapple, cantaloupe, honeydew, Apples, grapes, bananas, like it was a, a tray, legitimately, like bigger than the ones you get from the store. So they pretty much had that. They were munching on chips too throughout the day. Um, but then it was like getting close to dinner time and I'm like, all right, it's like four o'clock. I'm gonna make the chicken wings and the potato skins so they can have that for dinner. So did that, put it down. Then after that, maybe an hour after I got done doing all that, got it all fixed, Nick goes, can you make me chocolate cake? Because I had a chocolate cake mix in there. And I'm like, yeah, I'll make you chocolate cupcakes. So I was able to sit for like an hour and work on it and then made chocolate cupcakes and then sat and worked on it for pretty much the rest of the night but with that amount of sitting I was in so much pain after I was like oh my god I can barely make it up the stairs 
So yesterday I did not get to work on it as much as I would like to. I maybe worked on it for an hour and a half throughout the day. So like 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there, and then like ended the night for like 30 minutes working on it. And I did like one round last night. So it's taking everything in me to not just sit all day and knit on the sweater <laughs> because I'm so excited. And her sweaters are amazing. Oh my gosh. So that is pretty much it. I have bought some acquisitions. Um, I don't have them sitting here. Like I said, I bought a huge box of Knit Picks Brava Worsted because I plan on doing blankets for Emma and Colin as well. And those will be big blankets. The baby blanket was small. I started out small because I'm like, you know what? It'll be a quick one, which it wasn't quick. I think it still took me like about a month to make it. I wasn't rushing through it either. And there was a point where I didn't touch it for like over a week. So that and with the Knit Picks order, I bought these cute little, um, they're like crystals. They're so cute. They were stitch markers. Yes, I. Um, and then they also had these cute little, and this was during like their Black Friday sales. So everything was on sale, like cheapy. Um, they also had like these little sweater ones for knitting. And I got those, a little pack. I got sock blockers because Lord knows I need some. <laughs> um, I got all three sizes. I got the small, medium, and large. <sighs> yeah. Um, whew, excuse me. What else did I get? I got the yarn for the temperature blanket, which was impeccable yarn, which I bought one of each color. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you, Emma. I'm sorry. I'm not techie. Maybe dad can figure it out when he gets home. No, it, it only works on Angela. Okay. Um, the only other yarn I bought, okay, that's a lie. So I did buy the yarn for the temperature blanket, but I only bought one ball of each color to start, which I'm not gonna use most of them until, you know, spring, summer comes, but I wanted to have a whole entire palette laid out that in colorways that I liked. So I bought one of each ball and then I would kind of just buy one or two balls as I go or as they run down. Um, Cause I didn't want to buy like a whole blankets worth of yarn and not use some of them. I bought one of each and that was it. And then, what? What? Lily. Um, the only other thing I bought um, between here and then was I saw that <sighs> Bad Wolf Girl Studios, so Megan of um, the Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits podcast was having a sale and then she was also putting her shop on hold so um, most of her yarn wasn't going to be available for a while. And I saw her Christmas sock sets were going on sale and I was like, oh my gosh, yes, I want some. So I got her Mr. Grinch sock. Um, and it comes with a, you got to pick which color you wanted and I like the dark green um, because there isn't a super ton of dark green in there. It's mainly like that acidy green um, but I wanted the dark green. So I bought this with hopes that I was going to cast on a Christmas sock. Didn't happen. Um, everything else happened, but that is it. I have not bought anything else. Um, and I don't plan on buying anything else after that. Um, 
because I want to work from stash this year because I'm getting to that point and I was in this at this point in the very beginning of my pregnancy where I was just like oh my gosh we have so much stuff I want to purge I want to get rid of things like I was nesting in the first trimester and it kind of slowed down but then you know we had Christmas this is chatter now by the way <laughs> Um, we had Christmas and the kids got so much stuff. I'm sorry. What? Can I help you? Like, are you just, oh, gosh, you big old baby. Okay. Can I move for a second? I don't want to spill this water. What? What? Um, she's getting old guys. She's, she's nine now. Yes, you are. You're just an old lady, huh? Um, but anyways, we had Christmas. The kids got so much stuff. And I'm like, where are we going to put all of this? There's so much stuff. We have so much crap. Oh, my gosh. Like, I purged again. And then I sat there and I was like, where are we going to put all the kids' stuff? First, my thought was... I haven't been using my craft room. I haven't. I don't go up there hardly ever. And there are times when I need that alone time. But I don't know. I just, I, I don't like being alone in the house when I know Nick's home and the kids are home. Like, I want to be in the same room. I want to be in the same space together. And although I need that time to sometimes be alone and think and get stuff done, for the most part, I wasn't using it except to podcast. So I was like, well, seeing as I don't use the craft room as much as I thought I would, we'll move stuff around, move things. Like I said, this is now in our dining room. We'll move stuff around. We'll figure it out. And the kids can have that room as a playroom. So that was our original intention. But we noticed as soon as we put the toys up there, they weren't playing with them. So I was like, okay, that's not gonna work. So initially we have like a, it's a weird, the way our living room is set up. Like you have the TV on one side with the couches and then the door, and then there's like a whole other separate space, which is supposed to be a formal dining room, but I don't like walking that far to the dining room for dinner and breakfast and stuff like that. So I'm like, you know what? It was basically like a playroom, essentially. So once we got rid of the, not got rid of, but took our Christmas tree out and put it away and stuff like that, there was a lot more space in there. And we're like, you know what? We'll just continue to keep this as the playroom. And then, um, oh, I just made a big old mess. Um, we'll continue to make this a playroom. We'll move stuff around, get rid of some things. And then the craft room was kind of like half empty, not being used for a couple weeks. And I looked at Nick and I was like, why don't you just put your drums up there? Like instead of sitting in the garage where you're getting the cold and the heat of summer, you know, the cold of winter and the heat of summer. And it's not that nice to sit out there <laughs> during those times because during summer it gets really hot and humid and then he does not like the cold at all so him sitting out there in the winter time trying to play his new drums that he got for Christmas it he wasn't a fan so he did put them upstairs and now it is a music room to sound pretentious <laughs> Which really, it still has like a table with all my crafts. It still has my yarn in there. Some of it, like my dyed yarn, my hand dyed yarn. Um, it still has like storage stuff for like my random incense and crystals and <laughs> books. Like my, the closet is still full of stuff, like beyond full. Um, but I realized I have so much yarn, 
so much crap. And in the process, long story short, God, long story longer, um, when we were moving everything out of the craft room, I realized I have so much yarn. And I literally looked at Nick and I was like, why? Why do I have so much crap? Why did you let me buy this? And he was like, if I didn't let you buy it, you probably would have bitched at me. And I'm like, yeah, that's probably true. But I don't want it all. I don't want all this. I don't need all this. There's so much stuff. And I'm just, I'm over it. And it's to the point now where this one and then like my small six cubicle one that I wanted to fit here, but it wouldn't fit. It was like literally an inch too big. And wow, this keeps changing colors. Like it'll go from like warm to cool. Um, so I'm going to go through all that and I'm probably either going to donate it to a Goodwill or maybe we'll have a yard sale. I've been wanting to do a yard sale for a really long time to get rid of some of this stuff because I don't want to just donate it or throw it away. Um, like, well, I, I want to donate it. I just don't want to get rid of it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to just toss it. So I figured we would do a little yard sale. And if that was the case, then I would just put a buttload of yarn out there and put it for like 25, 50 cents a skein and be like, take it. Like, just take it. Or, you know, like, oh, the whole bag, 10 bucks. You know what I mean? Like something super cheap just to get rid of it because there's so much. There's so, so much stuff. There's so many different types of yarn that I bought just to buy to say, oh, I got the newest yarn, you know, but I don't use them. So, yeah, I want to keep it to like this and that and then, you know, maybe one tote of things that I have to have, but uh, I'm just trying to get rid of this stuff for real because there's too much. I know I have like a buttload of cotton yarn that I need to use. It's just a lot. I have a lot. And I know some people pride themselves on their stash, but I'm getting to the point where we move every two to three years. I have three kids. I just, I'm just tired of having stuff around me just cluttering up my space and it makes it hard to breathe it makes my anxiety worse so very much wanting to purge basically um which i've noticed that since purging a lot of stuff the kids behavior has got changed which sounds really odd but for the most part they've been better so ooh, oh sorry lily but my, i have to stretch my leg out there we go so yeah it's just it's time to get rid of a lot of stuff maybe i'll do a d stash on instagram or something um yeah where you guys pay like a few bucks and some shipping so i don't know let me know below um yeah I don't know when I'll be back on here. In all honesty, I have no idea. I want to say I want to get regular again and, you know, do a podcast every two months, two, two months, every two weeks to a month. But I'm just a big fat liar and whether or not that happens is completely um, up in the air. <laughs> I love podcasting and I love talking to you guys, um, but it's just, life is crazy. I mean, geez, we're in 2021 now and it's January 11th and already it seems like the world is burning. So yeah, <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure we're on the verge of an apocalypse or, you know, I live in the U.S. If you don't live in the U.S., then, you know, you're seeing it from the outside view. It seems like we're on the verge of, like, a civil war or some stupid garbage. <sighs> yeah, I'm pretty sure the apocalypse is coming. 
So, um, I do plan, fingers crossed, hopefully it gets done, if not today, tomorrow, to dye some new yarn. I have not dyed yarn in over a year. The last yarn I dyed was the Christmas Advents of 2019. Um, yeah, that's insane to me. I do want to dye yarn. The fact that I haven't all year is crazy because I bought a giant box of yarn and it's sitting waiting for me to dye it up. And I think when it came to the yarn, like my yarn business, I kind of went and I have a tendency to do this every time. I tend to think too big too soon and you know I wanted to have the multiple yarn bases and stuff like that and I'm just like okay time out <laughs> dial it back like I'm gonna focus on having two bases which is a DK base and a fingering base and they're pretty much the same when it comes to fiber it's gonna be I believe a 7525 of 75% super wash merino wool, 25% nylon, and start there because I feel like I went over and beyond with the bases and having multiple colors on multiple base on different bases. None of them were on the same base. So I had so many different colorways, and some were on like my 80. Ooh my 80 20 base some of it was on a 100 percent merino base some of it was on a sock 75 25 base then i tried pulling in highland un uh non-super wash highland wool and i'm like okay this is just too much this is too much okay let's dial it back i was like i'll have two weights same yarn technically just thicker um and that way I can get every color on both bases. And that way you could choose which weight you want. Because I feel like the main bases are either, you're either working a DK base or a fingering base, which I've come to realize is what most people do. So, um, that is that plan. Um, I want to do a lot more new colorways because I've noticed dyeing, repeated colorways is as much as I love doing that it gets very tiring and repetitive and I never wanted it to be repetitive so I may be that dyer that doesn't really do repeat colorways so it's like there and then it's gone I may bring back some if I write it down <laughs> Because I've dyed some and I'm like, oh my God, I really love this. And I would like to carry this more than just once as like a full time colorway. But I forgot to write down what I did. So I'm like, well, <laughs> it's here and then it's gone. So yeah, I, I'm just, I'm a mess basically. So yes, um, that is pretty much it. We've been on for an hour and I'm probably going to put in a little clip of Emma that she wanted to record some things and show you guys while I was getting ready for the podcast after this. Um, but yeah, hopefully I can come on a little more frequently than every, you know, three to four months and talk to you guys because I am definitely feeling the crafty mojo kicking up. I'm making things more consistently, you know, and I miss talking to you guys, to be honest. I really do. I suck at social media. So like, I say I suck at social media, but I feel like I'm on Facebook all the time, but I don't have a Facebook group. I don't add people on Facebook unless I've talked to you personally somewhere else for quite some time like I only have a few people on Facebook which is like I think Randy from Randy random Randy's ramblings and then 
Christina, who was the Blissful Stitch podcast. I don't know if she's done any podcasts. I haven't seen any recently. Um, but yeah, we got really close and we talk a lot about books and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, I don't really add people on Facebook. So if you add me, I probably won't add you just because I have a lot of personal stuff there. I share a lot of things with family, um, things that I don't necessarily want the general public seeing. So yes. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I've talked your ear off for over an hour at this point. So I hope you guys have a lovely week because it is a Monday. So I hope you have a lovely week, weekend to come, and you guys stay safe and warm if you're in winter or stay cool if it's su summer where you're at in this, you know, southern hemisphere words. Um, so yeah, I will see you guys all later. Bye. Now it's going. Meow. 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 Hi. Your dad's texting me. What are you doing? Meow. Me? Come here. The kitty bird. That money. Say meow, meow. He's on Beetle again. Say hi. We named him Brinks. We named him Brinks. I, ow, his claws. From oh. Hocus Pocus. Hey, Mom, where, where is that, like, screen so when people, like, text? Oh, that, I'm not doing it live. Oh. I'm recording it, and then, um... <laughs> Hi everybody. Do it after. That's my water. That's 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 my water. Thank you. <laughs> I think things looks cold better. He wants water. But I gave I yeah. check to see if he has fresh water. Okay. Even my mom got this. Yeah, fabric. Mom's back. And sides. I didn't want it to get too close because normally when I show people stuff, it gets right in their face. Yep. <laughs>